Bill Jelen contacted me. He had a challenge that somebody whooped on him and he made a video and he contacted me directly and whooped it on me. Threw down the gauntlet, now I gotta deal with it. The challenge, 100 people, 10 tables, 10 seats each, 11 rounds, like speed dating. How can we set up a schedule so that by the end of the 11 rounds, everybody has met everybody? Number five has met number two, number 86, number 100, number 54. Bill wrote some VBA code. He went into Monte Carlo simulations and he said that the closest he could get would be 65%. By the 11th round, the end of that, it's not mathematically possible to have everybody have met everybody. And the comments under that video seem to confirm that. Here is one way of looking at it. Here we've got everybody, one down to 100. We've got the 10 tables along the side, each session on top. And right here, we are showing these 10 people would be at table two during session four. By the end of session 11, will everybody have met everybody else? This is one of those situations where we really have to decide what is at stake here. Is this some Saturday afternoon get together low stakes it'd be great if everybody could meet everybody but if not there's no not gonna be any harm then we don't put a whole lot into this but if these are a bunch of cancer scientists and these sessions are happening over a month and each session is a full day then we need to figure something out. And one thing we'd have to do is go back to our friend, our coworker, our director, our client, and ask how important is this? And is there any wiggle room? Because I came up with a solution that we can do this in 19 rounds. Okay. Client? Can we do 19 rounds? Can we have 20 top tables? Can 15 top tables? Can something change so that we can make this happen if it's important enough? Let's look at how I approach this. I started with 100 names and I gave them an index. All right, going down to row 101, Donna Skip Newton, who is 85th in our index of one to 100. We've got 100 people. I started thinking about the days when I wrestled from seventh grade up through high school and college and some Navy tournaments. I started thinking round robin tournaments. Okay, watch this, unhide. I put everybody into five person teams. So the Amber team has these people in it. So we can think about this as 10 people per table. That means two teams. There you go, easy. The Amber team goes up against the bronze team. The Coral team, goes up against the denim team. We're on to something now. All right, so now let's look at it this way. Unhide. I made this table so that I could extract all of the legitimate pairings. Just made the X's there 
and then go to data queries and connections table one there's my source I did a fill down all right so we've got teal going up against yellow there's no X over here in this cell because yellow can't go up against yellow that's what I want to make sure of so go down here and here are all of the legitimate pairings yellow and amber yellow and blue go down coral goes up against blue blue goes up against amber but this isn't even necessary as I discovered because there are round robin generators all over the internet. We don't have to fool around with this. Here I am at printyourbrackets.com. Choose a round robin, 20 teams, boom. There are all of the possible pairings. But then there's another way to approach this. I can go to this round robin generator, put in a tournament name. I'm gonna call it Big Meeting. Number of pools, we want one pool. The number of teams is 20. I don't need to put in the team names. Number of locations, 10. It's like a big gym with 10 wrestling mats, but instead of wrestling mats, these are all tables with 10 seats each. Generate the tournament. And there we are. Round one is essentially showing us the 10 tables. At table one, we would have teams one and 11. At table six, we would have teams six and 16. We go down. And this is why it takes 19 rounds to get everybody to meet everybody or to have each team meet with each team. Here is where I brought in the data from that raw matrix. We can see round six, table six would have teams two and 13. Now here's the result with the team names. It took a whole lot of cleanup to do to get everything matched up. But here's what we've got. Round one, table one, the amber and orange teams. Table four, bronze and purple teams. And we get down to the final round. Amber and pink are at table one. Cyan and taupe are at table seven. I did try working with 100 individuals and 10 tables with 10 seats each. It is complicated and messy and it requires a whole lot of checking to make sure that somebody isn't assigned to two or more seats in one round. And that is where you really do have to think about what's good enough, does this have to be perfect, and Mathematically, if it's not possible to get what we want, do we just scrap it? Do we take it? What do we do? So there were a whole lot more interesting questions that came out of this. And it is quite a real world issue because there isn't a neat, clean, straightforward answer to this. We need more for our context to inform what do we do because we can't have everybody meet everybody with a hundred people 10 tables and only 11 rounds it'd be interesting to know if you've got a solution can you verify that this isn't mathematically possible or is it that is all for now and i will see you in the next video